Okay, good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight we'll have updates on the confirmed positive coronavirus cases over the weekend after the speakers, media members will be um, able to come up and ask questions one question at a time. So we'll let other people come up and ask. Um, first, we'll start with Director of Public Health, Catherine Wells. Good evening, everyone. Um, over the weekend, we identified six additional cases of COVID-19 um, in the Lubbock area. All six of these cases um, resulted from the testing or the drive-through testing that's been um, going on at UMC. Um, we've been very pleased with how that um, testing has been working. Um, they're screening individuals. If they meet criteria, um, they are putting them through um, for the complete testing and then sending those to a laboratory in Austin. And we've been having turnaround times in about 24 hours. Um, UMC has so far tested um, 455 individuals in our community, and we still have about 30 tests that are awaiting results. We probably won't have those until Tuesday. Um, we've completed all but one of the case investigations. Um, many of the cases that we're finding are actually exposures um, to previously known cases. Um, so that individual being contacted by the health department or being contacted by a case has allowed us to identify additional cases in the community. And one of the best things about that is that allows us to start limiting spread because we actually found somebody that's positive, um, have them tested, and then that has them isolate at home so that they're not able to infect additional individuals. Um, we also have two cases that we're reporting on that we updated the. Um, investigation status, and these are individuals that we are unable to, to um, associate with either travel or a known contact. And what this shows is that we are starting to see some community spread here in the Lubbock area. Um, this makes it even more important for individuals to follow those social distancing guidelines and also um, stay home when they're sick. Um, so there are possibilities of individuals um, being exposed and maybe they don't know about it. Um, so again, really focus on that social distancing. I've seen lots of people out in the parks this weekend um, enjoying some of that sunshine we've had today. Great way to spend the time. Um, spend some time with your family and really try to distance yourself from all those other social activities. Um, we've also updated our table on possible community exposures um, with some additional guideline or guidance and conversations. Um, we've realized that the risk associated with individuals at the restaurants is very, very low. Um, we're really looking at sustained contact um, with somebody for at least 15 minutes. Um, of two people sitting at a table, um, that's... We, we know who they were sitting with at the restaurant, so the health department's been contacting that individual, but that risk at the restaurant while they're sitting in the table is lower risk, so we've removed those. We have left some of the larger community events, and today we actually um, identified one of our contacts because they saw uh, an event that they attended on this list, um, thought they were symptomatic, went to UMC for testing uh, yesterday, and they are also a known positive. Um, so I think it's important um, to talk about those larger gatherings, even though we'll have fewer of them, um, but making those notifications. And I'll go turn it on to, over to Dr. Cook. Thank you, Ms. Wells, I appreciate that. Let me just reiterate what Catherine said about social distancing. We've seen it, I'll, I think all the leaders up here today have commented in, before this meeting about how we appreciate everybody that what we saw in our own experience out in the community this weekend in the social distancing. I had to run a couple of errands and what I saw at the, at the grocery store, the lines were a little longer, but we certainly kept our distance as we checked out. People kind of walked around each other. I didn't see any handshaking or hugging. Uh, that's, that's part of social distancing, right? So that was good. I commend everybody for doing that. The other thing that I want you to, and I saw people out uh, on their porches, and the warm weather is also bringing uh, people out. That's good, right? Make sure you wash your hands, as I said before, three times. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. I'll say it a fourth, wash your hands. And then stay away from people and cover your cough. We've got to keep doing that. 
The other thing here is that if you've been tested or you're sick, do not go about the community. You need to stay home. If you have a cough, you have a fever, you don't feel well, you have muscle aches and pains, you need to stay home. Find somebody to run those errands for you. And if you've been tested and you've met the criteria to be tested, you need to stay home until that test results comes back. That way, if you do come back positive, you haven't been out in the community engaging in social activities that could infect somebody else. So if you've been tested, you need to stay home. And let me say a word to our employers here. If you've sent an employee to be tested, we do not have the resources to test them again to make sure that they're negative after so many days. Our resources are still limited. We will test the people that are specifically need testing. And we can't test everybody to see they have a negative test to see if they're better, okay? So because we are community spread, we're considering this community spread now, that does create some anxiety. We have this uh, uh, order in place that we need to limit our travel. We need to um, not have any gatherings more than 10 people. That does create some social anxiety. So what the other thing I want to introduce to you today is Dr. David Trotter. He's a psychologist in our department. And he's the Director of Behavioral Medicine in the Department of Family Medicine at the Health Sciences Center. And he's going to visit with, with us a little bit about anxiety. Dr. Trotter? Thank you, Dr. Cook. Um, yeah, these are stress-provoking times. Um, a lot of changes, and it's, I think, pretty common for people to feel a bit out of sorts. And so I want to talk briefly about um, what are the symptoms of significant stress and what are some things that we can do to keep ourselves kind of psychologically healthy uh, over the coming weeks? Um, there are a lot of different symptoms of stress. They can be emotional. It could be things like feeling anxious, worrying, fearful, um, even irritable and sad. Uh, sometimes we see behavioral changes, so difficulty sleeping, changes in appetite. With uh, children, our kiddos, oftentimes they report a lot of physical symptoms, so those can be things like an upset tummy or a headache. Um, and sometimes we engage in behaviors that are less healthy, like resorting to drugs and alcohol. But it's important to know what to be looking in yourself, for yourself, and for your loved ones to identify people who are having a hard time related to stress. And there's a lot of things that we can do to help manage our stress and the stress of the others, of others around us. I like to think of it in terms of keeping, uh, keeping care of our mind, of our body, and our soul. So be thinking about things that you can do to keep your mind healthy. One of the things that you can do is try to limit the amount of media and social media coverage you're consuming around COVID-19. We know that if we um, kind of engage in too much social media around uh, stressful events, we tend to have more stress. That is particularly true around children. So we want to monitor how, uh, how much uh, they're consuming in terms of media and social media. Also, remind your children that they are safe. Maintain a positive attitude. We are strong West Texans. We can handle this. We can manage this. Uh, in terms of keeping your body um, healthy, we know that a strong, healthy body lends itself to, to good mental health. So stay active. Um, exercise. Eat right. Get enough sleep. Um, go take a walk, even if that's only in your backyard. Keep a good, uh, steady routine. Get up in the morning, uh, shower, uh, do your hair, do your makeup, get dressed. Uh, try to maintain those regular routines. In terms of feeding your soul, there's a lot of things you can do. You can uh, remain engaged with your, with your spiritual community. Um, taking care of your family, friends, and neighbors. You know, pick up the phone, call that elderly neighbor, ask them, you know, do you have food? Do you need medicines? Do you have enough toilet paper? Uh, and if they don't have those things, help them out. Uh, helping others is a wonderful way to feed our souls and to help us manage our own stress. And also remember, social distancing is not social isolation. Well, luckily, we live in a time where we can connect virtually with our loved ones. And I encourage you to do that. If you want to have dinner tonight with your family lives in California or Arizona or Connecticut, do that. Um, because, because we can right now. And that's, uh, and that's a real blessing that we all have. A couple quick uh, thoughts I have in closing. If you or someone you know is experiencing severe stress and to the point where you're having thoughts about self-harm or even suicide, I highly recommend that you reach out for professional help. Uh, that can include calling your physician, calling your mental health uh, provider, 
even calling 911 or the National, um, the National Suicide Prevention Helpline. Make contact with professionals. There is help available to you. And lastly, we are a strong West Texas community. Uh, we can do difficult things. This too, like everything else, will pass. And just make sure to keep the faith. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Trotter, uh, Dr. Cook, Catherine. I, it's a, I'm so thankful to be surrounded by such a, a strong a team of people. And Dr. Trotter, I'm very thankful for your uh, comments today. So good evening. I, I really have, uh, I'm going to limit my comments to sort of three areas. I want to start with some positives. Uh, I, I uh, um, first of all, to UMC and their the drive-through testing, it's going very well. We've tested uh, in excess of 450 people the last three days. Uh, we, we, by testing more people, we've had more positives, positives but that's, that's okay. That's what we expect. That's really what we'd like to have. And so I want to uh, thank our churches and our, our houses of worship for, for the way they went about, about business today. I've talked to a number of you who, you know, uh, went to church in your pajamas, on your couch, or in, on, your, on your bed this morning, but... but I, you know, I, the service I went to this morning was very well attended online. In fact, more people were watching it online than are often there on a Sunday morning. Uh, first Christian who did the, the parking lot church today had over nearly 250. 247 was the number I heard of people that were there for that today. I thought that was very creative, and, and I, they really, I think they really enjoyed it. People came out for that. Lamar Outdoor Advertising is, help, is working with us to give us uh, access to digital boards so we can do messaging. And that's uh, something that uh, to billboards, you'll see our messaging there, and, and we're thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for some people who fill in gaps in our community every day. YWCA, Early Learning Centers, uh, Guadalupe, Guadalupe Parkway Neighborhood uh, Centers, they, they're open for business this week. Okay, it's, and those, that's difficult because so many of the people that work there are parents of school-age children, but they found a way, and I mean, they also rely on our college kids who are gone, uh, and, and for the most part, and they need to stay gone if they don't live here. Um, but they, they've done that, and I'm very thankful for their efforts. I talked to, talked to one of their leaders just a, a little bit ago, and she wanted to make sure they were in, in, you know, in, in sync with us. And I, I was thankful for not only the communication, but their willingness to try to serve our community. Second topic is, uh, I've had a number, you, I think uh, many of you may have seen the governor's uh, press conference earlier today. And um, as we were walking in, we learned that Dallas County uh, has issued orders for shelter in place effective uh, tomorrow, at some point tomorrow. The governor uh, twice sort of dodged or kicked the can down the road a bit on, on doing a statewide shelter in place and suggested that it needs to be done at the local community. Now, that is not where I believe we are today. However, I believe that the definition of essential services has been stretched a bit in our community. Some people have taken this very seriously. Others have not. For example, I don't see how a nail salon fits essential services. You can't do that in, in, in do, do your social distancing. I think some of our home improvement stores have, have, have focused on this well, some have not. So I'll be uh, bringing together a group of advisors tomorrow to confer with them, and I think you'll see some clarification from us. Uh, other cities have done that, we'll better clarify uh, that, that, that order from the governor, because we, uh, and this is my final point, and we are going to take this seriously. It's not just words on paper. Um, this is, to me, is not a decision to be made based upon whether I get reelected or not. It's a decision to be made to slow down the spread of this virus, so we have the ability to take care of it as a community. It's not going to go away, but we need to slow it down so we have the ability to take care of it. We need to act a bit abnormally in some ways. Stay home. Do your social distancing. 
You know, I've heard several people talking about um, virtual happy hours. You know, it's easy enough to do. Tonight, we normally go to Cap Rock Cafe on Sunday nights with some good friends. So we're going to do takeout from Cap Rock, Cap Rock Cafe, and hopefully we can do a little FaceTime with them tonight. That, that queso will still be very good. The hoarding has got to stop. Come on. I mean, we're better than that. Now, thank goodness we don't have fights in our stores, and that's going on in other places around the state, but think about your neighbor when you go to the store. Buy just what you need. Those stores are going to stay open. There's plenty of supply. Food and other products. There's plenty of that. Let's let them do their jobs Finally, let's take care of ourselves and our neighbors. Let's do a good deed. Good deed. I think that maybe the way we feed our, our soul, as Dr. Trotter said, make ourselves feel good, is to do something for someone else. We will come through these times stronger and quicker the sooner we realize how serious it is right now. So please, if you hear one thing from me, that's my message. Uh, I thank you for being here tonight. Lacey. I have a question for Dr. Cook. I'm Karen McKay. I haven't said that. KCBD. Um, Dr. Cook, we appreciate them saying the exposure sites, but let's say somebody is um, realizes that they were there on Friday, even though you said your, the exposure site was Wednesday at a building. How long is the virus active? And when are these places notified so they would even know to clean where the virus might have been there? Well, so, you know, it, it depends on the surface. It's hard to know exactly how long the virus is going to live. You can find all kinds of different things on, on the Internet that talks about the length of how, it, how long it stays someday. Some a few days, some of them just a short hours, a few short hours. You, I am quite sure that most, you can't say everybody, that most people are aware of this. And most restaurant places and everybody else is going above and beyond and trying to clean. And so, but for that individual that was there Wednesday and it's Friday, for the most part, we need to just carry on. I don't, I'm not particularly worried about that kind of exposure at all. And is there a place that people can call to find out more about the exposure, like what department it was in? What part of the store? If they were in the store and Walmart, Walmart is a big place. We talk to the management of the store. We we talk directly to the management if indicated, and then it's up to the management to disseminate that information. And can I ask a question to the mayor? And then I promise, Lacey, I'll I'll comply. Mayor, yes, at what point are you willing to order a shelter in place? Since the governor has indicated he is giving more authority that, to the mayors, are you waiting for a certain number? At what point would you give that order for Lubbock? I'm not sure it's a number. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not afraid to, to, to make that decision if we get to that point. I'd like to see our citizens take this more seriously, as I commented a few minutes ago. Um, but I think uh, it's been less than 48 hours since the governor's uh, uh, order went into place. I'd like to see how people behave uh, and um, we will continue to monitor this main this uh, this continues to be very fluid uh, you, those of you that have followed it in the media know how how often things have changed in the last um, five six days and so I, I can't help but believe that it will continue to evolve we'll stay with it we're going to make the very best decisions to uh, first and foremost protect the safety of the citizens of Lubbock. I'm Jamie Lozano with the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, and I have a question for Mayor Pope. Um, in the in the instance that we are in a shelter for place, um, shelter in place, does Lubbock have a plan for that, and should residents be preparing for that possibility? We certainly have a plan. Uh, remember that shelter in place would still. Um, it's a hypothetical. We've, we've not really um, 
my, my um, let me back up. I've educated myself this weekend on a number of different shelter in place orders that have been around, done around the country. I find all of them to be uh, much looser than what I think of a classic shelter in place. There's uh, access to, for groceries, there's access to go uh, for financial transactions, there's a number of different bits of access. Uh, we, we, are, uh, uh, we have not studied what that would look like for Lubbock, at least I have not. Our emergency management people have those things in place. Uh, we'll, I'll look at those tomorrow. And, and, uh, uh, but I don't think you should expect a shelter in place coming from, from me tomorrow. I think first and foremost, I want to make sure we better define the, the emergency action that's in place. Remember, no, no fewer than 10 people in social gatherings. All of the hygiene practices that we've 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 talked about they're recommended by the CDC and we've, we've talked about over and over essential services we need to work from home we, we need to find a do our work a way to do our work on the phone so that's where I am right now I can't really can't add anything and I really don't want to discuss too much more that of what it would be I think a hypothetical and then I'm not sure who this would be for, um, but can somebody elaborate on any state or federal assistance that Lubbock has gotten so far, as far as you know, supplies or anything like that? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. We we've uh, uh, Mr. Atkinson and his team um, uh, with emergency management, uh, in 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 addition to uh, uh, Congressman Arrington and his office, and and some certainly support from the state, are working hard right now to focus on uh, personal protection equipment, PPE. That, that's what we think could be or will be our first challenge. We're okay at the moment, but we need more of that, and we have reason to believe that some is on its way. I'm not certain it's enough, but to, to date, that's all that we've asked for. Otherwise, we're completely sufficient. We're, we, we, we know that the UMC testing lab, at the pace we're going, we're going to need more tests. I know that those that that work is in in progress to get more tests, but at the moment, uh, that would be the only uh, uh, area that we we lift as a concern. Hi, just a few questions. Um, do we know if we're going to follow the example of Austin, which obligates stores to maintain six feet apart for people who are even standing in line? I know that people are mostly doing that, keeping their distance, but is that going to be obligated? Or is it going to be like Dallas County and shut down a longer list of businesses and only allow essential services? I think you should look for some guidance on that tomorrow. And then this one is sort of for the health department on that. Um, I know on a typical day, even though this is not typical times at the moment, that the health department would be closed on the weekend. Is that something that's going to be affecting testing and getting results back in a timely manner? No, we actually were staffed from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, um, both yesterday and today. And the call center at the Emergency Operations Center was open for those same hours. My question is for the mayor. Uh, do you anticipate requesting support from the Texas National Guard at any point this week? I can't imagine needing the National Guard this week. I don't see our situation uh, getting to that point. I know the governor's activated it, but I can't imagine that. Just to, to follow, follow up on another question I had. Um, so the fire marshal's office uh, checked uh, 52 establishments uh, yesterday in, in a couple of hours, uh, and all were in compliance. Uh, so that, that's good news. I think we want people following this guidance, um, but we will continue to stay vigilant on this. We're not just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Matthew Still, K Make News. Mayor Pope, I've got a question for you real quick. You mentioned essential businesses. You mentioned nail salons. Same thing, beauty salons, barbershops. I think you should businesses. wait for, I mean, that makes sense to me. I think it probably does to you. I, I, um, let's wait for tomorrow and get a little more guidance on that. Okay, thank you. One more question. Okay, that's it. Thank you all for coming.